talk about what are the most important macromolecules in your body. Proteins. Proteins are very, very important. Okay, they have so many different functions. Okay, they're gonna work for structure. Some of them are gonna be very, very stiff, very strong. They're gonna make the structural proteins in your hair, for example, some in your ligaments, the horns. And this guy over here is made of proteins. So they can be very, very, very stiff, very, very strong. So they can be used for, for uh uh structural purposes they can also do storage they can also store things okay energy based um they could be used for energy as well uh, also if you ever heard about your muscles your muscles have something called actin and myosin which enable your muscles to contract uh transport proteins other type of proteins a little bit more globular and they're used to transport stuff for example hemoglobin hemoglobin Globin is a protein present in your red blood cells, and it transports one of the most important gases, at least for uh, for living organisms, called oxygen. And the most or very globular proteins uh, called enzymes are extremely important, and they're going to be kind of part of our big chapter later on. Uh, not this chapter, but a following chapter. Enzymes are going to help chemical reactions. They're going to be catalysts. They're going to speed up chemical reactions okay so all of these things okay are made of proteins so you have different types of proteins with different types of uh, structures for different types of, of functions okay so let's start with a very much with the basics what are proteins proteins are nothing but polymers long chains of amino acids and from a previous video you know that an amino acid is going to be a monomer okay and the polymer, you put a bunch of amino acids together, you make a polymer, you make a polypeptide. And we will learn later on in this, in this section that this polypeptide is a big, huge, humongous chain of monomers of amino acids, and they're gonna be folding specific manners, giving that protein a specific structure and function. Okay, so like I said, proteins are going to be involved in a lot of things. Okay, they're going to be controlling complex reactions, for example, as enzymes. They're going to be moving things, they're going to be transporting molecules. Okay, and obviously they're going to be present in all of your organisms. Proteins is pretty much what you're showing. Okay, what you see you are pretty much a big, uh, big bag of proteins. Okay. Now we'll talk about this in, a, in our in our next section. We'll talk about nucleic acids. We'll talk, for example, about DNA. And you know that DNA is going to be the uh, kind of your your blueprint, right? The blueprint of who you are, right? Uh, they say that everything that it's you, your instructions to become you, it's in the DNA. Perfect. But here's a relationship that you need to understand, and this is why proteins are so important. Yeah, DNA has instructions, but DNA by itself can do nothing. It's just a map, okay? It's just a blueprint. DNA can put a blueprint, okay? A blueprint, for example, of a building. It's just a map, okay? Do you have a building by having a blueprint? The answer is no, right? You have the instructions. You have the instructions to do something right and we know that we that that's something we know right dna has the instructions of life the instructions of to make to make you right but here's the connection the instructions to what dna has instructions to make proteins and this is a very important link because that's why you're a big bag of proteins that's what really makes you different okay the type of proteins that you produce and the proteins the instructions for pro are going to be in your DNA. So let's talk about the monomers. Let's talk about amino acids, which are the monomers. Okay, an amino acid is going to be a monomer. You bring a bunch of them together, you make a chain, right? A chain of amino acids, which is a polypeptide. But looking at this amino acid at just one monomer, what is it made of? 
proteins have carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, and in some cases, even sulfur. But these are the main components of proteins, okay? These are the main components of proteins. Carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, they be making amino acids, okay? Those are gonna be like the backbone of stuff, okay? The backbone of amino acids, okay? So we said the amino acid is gonna be the, the amino acid. One amino acid is a monomer. How many amino acids do we have? We have 20 of them, okay? We have 20 different amino acids that are gonna make all of the proteins that you need, okay? Just 20, that's it. 20 amino acids make all the proteins that you need. Okay, to make all types of structures that you need to, okay? To do all those proteins that are gonna be part of your hair, your horns, uh, your enzymes, your hemoglobin, Thing is based on 20 different amino acids. I will have a chart, okay, or a picture of amino acids uh, in another in another slide, actually in an attachment. So these are going to make these 20 amino acids are going to make all your proteins. Okay. So let's look again into the let's look into the into the amino acid. Uh, the amino acid is going to have a central carbon. Okay. And let's look at this picture as we work. Through this picture has a central carbon, central carbon, okay, which is going to be covalently bonded, covalent bonds, to a carboxyl group. Remember, one of those functional groups is going to have a carboxyl group with carbon, oxygen, and a hydroxyl group, and this is going to be, I'm going to do this in a different color, that way you can match them. I'm going to do green for carboxyl group. Actually, I'm going to do something more of a fuchsia color. Okay, I'll just make it a little bit, this a little bit longer. But I want to use different colors so you can match them. Okay, carboxyl group is going to be this group. Okay, it's going to have an amino group, and remember I told you about amino groups? Amino groups are gonna have a nitrogen in there, right? It's gonna have an, an amino group, a nitrogen group here, and this is gonna be the amino group, okay? And this is just one amino acid, guys, okay? Just one amino acid. It's gonna have a hydrogen atom. I'm gonna do this in probably something a little bit um, different here. Hydrogen atom, okay? This is your hydrogen atom, okay? And this is very, 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 very important. It's gonna have a side chain. We call it an R group. This is very important because this R group is gonna give the amino acid special chemical properties. Remember I told you there's 20 different amino acids? Well, there's 20 because each of them have a different R group, okay? A different. R group for each amino acid. That's what makes it different. So we have 20, all of the amino acids are gonna look the same. They're gonna have an amino group, carboxyl group, central carbon, hydrogen, but the chain for the R group over here is gonna be different. It's gonna give it a different personality, a different property. Sometimes it's gonna give it uh, some polarity. So sometimes the R group can be a polar group. And if it's a polar group, it is gonna be hydrophilic. Okay, it's gonna be able to interact with water. Sometimes the R group is gonna be nonpolar, right? And if that R group is nonpolar, that R group is gonna be, or that amino acid is gonna be shying Away from water, so it's gonna it's gonna be more like hydrophobic. Okay, sometimes this R group 
is going to be charged like iron, like an iron. Remember, like iron, remember ions? Remember, polar molecules and ions are a little different. Polar molecules, that means that um, if it's a polar molecule, it's a polar covalent bond. That means there's sharing, unequal sharing of electrons, and there's partial charges. But with ionized one, there's a specific charge. So an amino acid can be positive, positively charged, full, a full positive charge, or it can have a full negative charge. Okay, and imagine you have a chain, for example, here, okay, you have a chain of amino acids, one, two, three, four, five. Some of them are going to be polar, some of them are going to be nonpolar, some of them are going to be charged, some of them are going to be negatively charged, some of them positively charged. And that is going to make a lot more sense when we start talking about, for example, uh, how it folds. When the protein folds, okay, it has to do with that. It has to do with the with the interaction between different amino acids within that big chain. Some of those amino acids are gonna be hiding from the water, others are gonna be like, hey, I'm here, I can hang out with water, I'm gonna be facing with water, okay? So again, the R groups are gonna dictate how protein, uh, how protein functions, okay? And we'll see that in a little bit later. For here, a couple of examples, I'm gonna go back to red. And actually, I'm gonna go here really quick. I erase this eventually, so central carbon, this is your central carbon, okay? So this is an amino acid, okay? This is an amino acid, okay? This is an amino acid. This, and this here, I'm just going to give you an amino acid. And this is kind of the main structure of an amino acid. Now, sometimes, like I was saying here, uh, the R group, the, the side chains, this is going to be an R group, okay? Uh, sometimes it's going to be like this, and this is very nonpolar. So this is going to be wanted to hide away from water, right? That's why it's going to be hydrophobic. But other and uh, there could be another one, for example, another uh, R group in the same chain is another R group. And again, the R groups are these ones here, okay? They're gonna be attached to the amino acid. This R group here is gonna be, guess what? It's gonna have an oxygen here. It's gonna have kind of an electronegative atom. So it's gonna be a little bit polar. So this part, this, this R group is gonna be a polar R group, which is gonna be hydrophilic, which it, it means it's gonna be able to hang out with water, okay? And if you, have, again, if you have a huge chain of amino acids, like this one over here, okay, you will see that some of them are gonna be polar, some of them will be non-polar, some of them will be charged, some of them will be non-charged, and that, when you put it, when you, when you let this polypeptide go by itself, it's gonna fold, and it's gonna fold depending on the interactions between these amino acids that are positive, that are negative, that are polar, that are non-polar. The non-polars are gonna be hiding, the polar ones are gonna be in the water, and that's how a protein folds, depending on the different amino acid. But the different amino acid, what makes it different is again this R group, this side chain. Now let's start putting them together. Okay, I just explained you what an amino acid looks like, right? But I told you, like every single time when we have a monomer, we want to go put different monomers. Stick them together to make a polymer, right? And the monomer, in terms of a protein, is a amino acid, and a polymer is a polypeptide. So let's make a polypeptide. How do we make a polypeptide? Question: How do we make a polypeptide? What is the reaction that we use to make chains? If you said dehydration reaction, you're absolutely right. Okay, there has to be an dehydration reaction. So amino acids are linked together by peptide bonds. We usually call the covalent bond produced a peptide bond if we're talking about proteins. Okay. And how do we get a peptide bond? How do we put two amino acids together? Via dehydration reaction. That means that there has to be some kind of dehydration. We're going to be losing water. Okay. Uh, let's see it. Let's see it over here. This is going to be one amino acid and another amino acid okay one aa second aa okay amino acid okay let's put them together how do we do that let me go with my blue because blue for water right what's going to happen is this hydroxyl group from this carboxyl group and this hydrogen here from the amino group okay we're going to get rid of it okay it's going to leave as water we're taking away water. If we take 
water, then we can stick them together, right? And what do we produce? A bond, a covalent bond. In this case, because we're talking about proteins, we're talking about a peptide bond. And this is your peptide bond, okay? Now we have two amino acids together. And if you wanna add more amino acids, do the same thing. Plus another amino acid, plus another amino acid, in other words, another, another dehydration reaction, then another dehydration reaction, et cetera, et cetera, okay? Functional proteins are made up of polypeptide chains, precisely twisted, folded, coiled into a unique shape. And we'll talk about this in terms of structures. We'll talk about the different ways of how a protein can fold, okay? We'll talk about how proteins fold. There's gonna be four levels, okay? That's gonna give is that's gonna give a that's gonna give a protein its function. Okay, depending on the shape, it's gonna give it its function. All right, so really quick, we we're talking about uh, proteins. Uh, we have an amino end, which amino, end, like I said, is gonna be the we call it the N terminus. Amino end is gonna be this one over here with the N. Okay, where it's the ending is gonna be a nitrogen, uh, an, uh, an amino group, an amino group with a nitrogen. And then at the other end, we'll have a carboxyl end, okay, with a C terminus, okay? So if we look, actually, let me, let me redo this really quick. Let me show you in terms of, I'm going to show it to you with, with, this, um, with this small little chain of two amino acids. That's the amino end, okay, one side, part of the chain ends with the amino end or the end terminus. The other one ends up with a C terminus with a with a carboxyl end. Okay, and proteins can be several thousand amino acid long uh, amino acids uh, amino acids long. It could be a very 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 long. It usually is thousands of amino acids. I, I think there's some there, there's some smaller ones, but even the smaller ones are going to have at least 20 to 30 amino acids. Okay, so there's still chains of amino acids. And that is the basics of an amino acid. Now, next, I want to present you another video on protein structure. So now we're going to be seeing, uh, we're now going to be looking at the polymers, at the polypeptides, and see how they fold. Okay, giving you specific shapes.